Okay, welcome to beautiful, sunny Southern California. Oops, see that smoke? That's not, not supposed to be doing that. <coughs> but that is a do-it-yourself fire pit with a Dakota, you know, tunnel or whatever you want to call it. The D Dakota Indians would have two tunnels, one bringing in fresh air, one taking out smoke. So, as I was reading about all these do-it-yourself fire pits with Dakota, it's basically a chimney almost, but it's not a chimney. The difference is, is it's bringing in cool air and putting it at the bottom of the pit. Now, I put a match in there 30 seconds ago. I had some uh, pine needles and uh, <coughs> you no, know, first I dug it down about a foot and a half and got it to about the size I wanted. I, probably a little, I don't know, it was too big and now it's too small, but then I dug out the hole. I found this from our leftover from our deer, uh, one of our neighbors remodeling jobs. I got two of these pipes. One is for a drainage thing that I made out front, which you guys have seen a video on, but you haven't seen the pipe. That's how far down it goes actually, about that far. That pipe there is about three feet, three, a little over three feet long. So I dug down one foot, dug over about a foot, it's a foot over, so down a foot, over a foot, then got bricks <coughs> to keep the tunnel from collapsing because I don't want this to be a temporary thing. I just want to start building on it. I got a big slab it's a stepping stone for the bottom put it down there leveled it got it equal with the uh, depth of the hole so there's the hole and I you know it's being hopefully held up somewhat by these bricks but you can see already as the wind blows it's blowing in and blowing the smoke that way. So it is working well. Let me back out on that. So you've seen the hole. See the smoke is now. So you either have to build the intake further over so it gets cool air. This is what all these videos I've watched. Also stump burning, which I'm gonna do with that uh, dead mm -hmm. avocado tree. But, since I'm a pyromaniac at heart, I figured I'd start with the fire pit. So I dug the pit to the size I wanted, about a foot, a little over a foot down. And then I put a stepping stone down there, which is about a foot by a foot and a half <coughs> uh, in width and length and about, about two feet thick. There's a bit of air and rocks below the stepping stone because you're supposed to have that also for the air to circulate better. And I put in, I don't know, about five broken up pine branches and some pine needles just to get it going. Threw in a match, went in, got my camera, and here you go. So here is the... Let me see if I can, yeah, I can feel a vacuum. Yep, definitely, so it's working. So it's bringing in the cool air, and see, most people just do it at ground level, and if you do it at ground level, you gotta go further away so it can get cool air. But since this is so high, mm, <coughs> As this heats up, I don't know if it will or not, how hot it'll get. That's why I made this low. And there won't be any giant bonfires in here like people on ranches do and farms. Or like I used to do in Utah. Where you could burn 
stuff in Utah. It's not against the law. You could, if you have a backyard like this size, this is a big lot. Actually, that's a little house. But uh, if you got a lot this size, no trees, or in that area, you could build a fire pit to burn junk in. <laughs> totally legal. Not here in California, though, because a bunch of hippie freaks. So, as far as I know, this is legal, as long as you're not around anything that can burn, and I'm not around anything that can burn. We've got a slab of cement. It used to be a the slab of a giant... Uh, what do you call those? Can't forget, can't remember, but uh, it was big, <laughs> and then I had a trailer on it. Be really careful. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've lived here I my whole life. Smell it all the way down here. Yeah, smelling isn't going to do anything. I know, as long as you're okay. Yeah, dog fire the... pit. Okay. You see anything? That's all I ask. I I've been you. big. I've been building this for two weeks. I've done them. I used to do them up in Utah, where I, and I lived up there. Where you don't have a bunch of psychotic hippies freaking out over pieces of fire. Yeah. It's completely safe. It's a fire pit with a Dakota. And you've yep, and you've got greenery around it. And stuff. Got greenery oh, yes. and, uh, and you've got dirt room right next to it to cover it up. You're do you're doing good. This is just my I do just it yourself. It. I know. I have a house in the mountains, and I've been back the guy that used twice. to live there. I used to have barbecues, and he called the fire department. I'm not calling it the party. I know, but I almost but that's my want to choke them. That's just why I was paranoid. Because I've been evacuated twice from our mountain house. And it's, you yeah. smell smoke, you find out where it comes from. It's a safe method. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Where do you live? Right there? Where next, the, to, next to, right there with the white. Next to the, the white garage, thing. With the electric garage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to know the people there. I haven't lived here in a while. You've been here since 63. Yeah, I think you Oh, but I know your son. No, you know my husband, Joe Gonzalez. And you the big guy parents. that used to write, or let, uh, do fire, uh, light that's rockets off? That was his brother, John Gonzalez. That's it, John. That was a long time ago. Yeah, we've been here forever. Okay. I've been here 20 years. Okay, good enough. Have a good one. All right, you too. This will be out in about 10 minutes. That's fine. Okay. I don't want you to worry. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? His husband. So not only do I get a fire pit going, within 10 minutes I have someone's uh, man's husband <laughs> going to check on me. Now, you know, you know me, my friend, best friend Tony was gay, and it's just that I never thought because... I'm not going to get into politics or anything like that. It's just California is such a strange place to live now. Where it really was like the land of opportunity and people lived, came here from all over and you could build a life for yourself. Like my granddad did and, and my dad. He bought his house for like $27,000 1971 or 72. You can't even buy a car for $27,000. So, now I got someone's, a man, <laughs> someone's husband, a man's husband, checking on my smelling fire. So, as I was going on about paranoid California freaks, hippies, oh, that's what I meant, people like that. Because there used to be a jackass that lived in that house, like I was telling uh, that dear gay man that uh, he would, every time I'd start a barbecue in a barbecue, in a barbecue, like, you know, those big ones with the, you know, he would call the fire department, which got on my nerves after a while, and I just said, well, screw that, and I stopped doing that. That was in the 80s and 90s, early 90s, and then I was the hell out of here. But, since I've been back, Armenian, 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 they don't care. They keep to their self, and they keep, you know, 
So if I have like a guy like that, who's, yes, yeah, he, he's lived here over 20 years. So his parents, I knew, they lived in that. Now they were crazy. And the sun was crazy. He used to light off skyrockets and they get caught in the top of that tree. This was in the 70s. And I had to put up with that fat, crazy guy all the time. So apparently the fat, crazy guy's brother is gay. And they have taken over the house. Or the brother and his husband have taken over that house. That's okay, so... Getting to know your neighbors. It's almost like a South Park episode. Jeez Louise. Okay, so getting back to my it's a fire pit. <coughs> He's so hot. I'm uh, happy that I have greenery and oh Lord. Help me, Lord. So getting back to this and that nice exchange. So there's the Dakota. There's the tunnel that goes from there to there. Let's see if it's still drawing in cool air. It is, big time. Big time. So that'll keep that running for a long time, which I really don't want now because of our neighbor, our kind of distant neighbor. But yeah, he, he would never be able to afford to live here. Because that's why I'm like, how are you living here? What do you do? Are you, because every house here, a million dollars. This, this is my parents' house. Of course, they're not here, obviously. This property is worth eight hundred, eight to 900000 That house, $3 million, $4 million. My friend up there, he has a little piece of crap house like this. That property, since it's next to an alley, he might get $700,000. Still, the prices are, are maybe more. It all depends on who's buying it and what they're going to do with it. Remodel, tear it down. Like this, they'd rip it down and build a, a new house using all the property. But, uh, okay, well, that kind of took the wind out of my sails for my trial run of my do-it-yourself fire pit with another paranoid neighbor. Uh, so anyways, if you're going to do it, if you're going to make a fire pit in your backyard and you do not have psychotic neighbors around you, doesn't matter that they're gay. Actually, the gay ones are, gay neighbors are a lot more tolerant and easy to get along with. Found out that out when I lived in Hollywood. But, uh, yeah, in Utah, it's a different way. And outside of, well, Nevada's weird. Because it's, it's starting, there's so many people from the other surrounding especially California coming into Nevada that it's becoming a standoff a few years ago Nevada was ranches brothels and Vegas <coughs> and an Air Force base a giant one now it's uh, crazy little towns with crazy little ideas and uh, there's still the big ranches that have been there for decades and decades and like there's this one ranch I went into this in Sand Valley Nevada this is, I'm going off on a, a rant but the one ranch is a privately owned ranch and they make money they make a lot of money they do cattle horses and all that stuff and it says we don't call 911 and then they just have two p pictures of two uh, guns okay there you go. And it's a big sign made out of wrought iron and everything. So you know where they're standing. And then the other one across the street, literally, or across the dirt road, is a uh, tourist ranch where they bring people in and to 
pretend that they're on a ranch and the kids can ride the horses and the family can come out there for the day and I think you can spend the night there or whatever. And, you know, pretend you're on a ranch or you're on a ranch. But they don't like the other ranch, hates it because they get all these tourist idiots wandering around. And if they wander onto their property, they're going to get shot at. And then they get pissed off because the tourists are wondering why they're getting shot at. Well, you've just trespassed. So, this guy, so he lived in the mountains. So this guy's story is him and his husband lived in the mountains, so they're paranoid, or he lived in the mountains, and all the fires, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great. Where do you think we're living here? Well, this is the mountains. You had Dingleberry. Ugh, I wish it was state. <laughs> It's so crazy. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to dig this fire pit. And, you know, my mom wants it done. So this is, yeah, this is a project I do while I'm in California. Because I'm stuck. Like I said, I got the car. And I'm down here doing a test for, you know, it's always some doctor doing a test. So next week I go in. Oh, see, yesterday I had a doctor's appointment. Friday I had a doctor's appointment. Today I don't, but next Wednesday I do, and the following Wednesday I do. And then I'll be free. But, and I think I'll have enough money to jam up to Utah and then uh, work on the album, hang out with my son. And, and that's where I got property, in Utah, southern Utah. And I'm waiting to see if he's going to stay there in where he lives, and if these people, my parents... See, for, so for all of those, you want to you want, see that little garage in 1982, 3, 4, I gutted it and made it into a studio. So every band I was ever in rehearsed there. Every band, including Fatal Attraction. We jam in three Marshall stacks, all my bass amps, and just rattle that little friggin' hut it's a one car garage and this is crazy that we even did that and but see it was a different time we had one neighbor four houses down that would complain and my mom would tell her to be quiet that's my son's job you know cool mom i'm sure the fire pit people are long tuned out sorry but someday i'll have to come do a why not this is my fm uh, transmitter antenna and I used to broadcast my own metal station in the 90s so when KNEC went off the air within a week I went out to the desert and bought this off a guy this is the antenna and unfortunately with this length because that's how the you know so with that setup, it's 98.56789, that's FM. So 98.7 is a huge station. So I get to broadcast all around it. But if I'm not careful, I bleed into 98.7 and they call the feds on me. And then now they can be at this house in like a half hour. <coughs> in the 90s, it took them longer, like a month. Okay, so I'm not going to put any more sticks in there, but you can see the embers. And there they are. So what I'm going to do, since the wind is kicking up because it's dusk, is put a... I got this fencing material. So if any embers decide to try to fly up, this will catch it. But uh, that's a pretty successful first test in this pit. I think I'm going to take those sticks out because that will keep going forever. I'll throw it right here. Right here. Whoa. Right here. So I'm going to have to do this. 
this. You know that guy's going to be checking on this pit the whole night now. And I don't want to see, I want this to burn down because the whole thing of building this pit here is to give, put ashes in under that red thing there, if you can see it. Uh, or this. That's a, uh, oh, what do you call it? Where you put the food, you just put food scraps and all that crap. It's a compost pit. So I gotta maintain that. My mom throws crap in there. And then when I'm around, I come back here, I check it, I put dirt on it, mix it around, blah, blah. But really, what's really good for the nitrate stuff is ash found that out you find a lot out on uh, YouTube so uh, that's why I wanted this to burn down to nothing so I'm gonna take those sticks out and let them not burn all night because we got a uh, fire chief uh, Alexis or whatever his name is What's that guy, uh, what's that, Caitlin? <laughs> I'm not gonna make any jokes, I can't, because then I feel bad about my, my buddy, Tony. Cause, well, see, he made more, every joke I know, I learned from him. I mean, about, you know, that stuff. So... I'm going to put that, no, the other ones seem to work better, so, we'll do this, it's not working now, that stick must have helped it, I could use that, I don't know for what, but, hmm. Yeah. 